Hello, it's Wednesday the 1st of May 2013. A warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk. Someone wrote in, um, uh, who was it? Was it, uh, I can't remember who it was now. Someone wrote in and said I keep saying 2012. Is that right? Have I still not set my internal calendar um, uh, uh, corrector? In my head, it still doesn't seem to be working right five months into the new year. So I shall reiterate, uh, Wednesday the 1st of May 2013. Welcome to today's United Kingdom talk. And of course, being as it's a new month, a new picture of Barry Manilow on our calendar behind us. The May picture is him looking, looking in a rather seductive way uh, over the month of May. Don't you think? Yes. With a little kind of kind of blue rinse in his hair. I wish I had hair to put a blue rinse in, to be honest. And talking to Barry Manilow, Anita, uh, who I'm, I'm waiting to hear from, actually. Anita has been to see the Mr. Manilow himself. Not only did she see the show, but she purchased the platinum package. Oh, yes. So she gets the, sh the champagne reception. And, more importantly than everything else, a meeting with Barry Manilow. And I haven't heard back from her yet. I see a couple of little photographs on her Facebook page, but no email yet back from Anita, and it was a few days. I, I, must, I can only think she's trying to get over it. You know, she, 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 she's, she's probably still in a bit of a daze at the moment from the whole experience. So, Anita, please, when you're ready, let us know how you got on at the Barry concert. And more importantly, the meeting with Barry. Hang on, I'm going to sneeze. Oh. Hang on. Oh, it won't come. Oh, dear. Oh, you can tell that summer is on its way now, can't you? Yes, the old pollen is starting to affect the nose. And I must also say, um, as summer is just around the corner now, we hope. <coughs> Excuse me. It's like a foggle when I blow my nose. You may remember last year, we went back to, um, we actually took a break for the whole of the summer period. Uh, this year, I don't want to do that. However, uh, from today... There will be one show a week uh, throughout the summer period, probably returning to two shows once it starts getting cold again. All right. I hope you don't mind that, but there's an awful lot to do. And I'm having trouble fitting everything in at the moment. But rather than cut it completely for the summer, uh, I'm going to be doing just one show a week, which will be uh, the Saturday one. Uh, and we we'll carry on doing that live. So what happens on Friday, we record the show live. All right for Saturday, then it becomes the show. So if you want to join us for the live show, then feel free to do so. Or you can just wait for the recorded uh, uh, version of that, which is exactly the same as we don't take anything out or there's no editing involved. Just a little bit at the beginning, a little bit of music at the beginning, a little bit of music at the end and a couple of pictures. And that's about it. OK, so uh, we'll be going to one show a week as from now, which will be on Saturday. So the next show will be Saturday. And then after that, it will be every Saturday, but recorded on the Friday. The Friday live. Am I making sense here or what? <laughs> the Friday, the, the Saturday show is recorded on Friday and you can join in with that because we do all that live and you can ring in by telephone or Skype as well. More information on that and where to exactly find it. Just go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And at the very top, you'll see it will tell you exactly where to go on Friday mornings at 10.30 UK time, which is uh, British summer time at the moment. And you'll be able to join us there uh, uh, for the show. Uh, if not, just pick up the recording as you normally do. Often some people uh, uh, say, can we get you on iTunes? Yes, indeed you can. If you just go to iTunes and type in United Kingdom Talk, you're given the option of getting either the audio only version of the show or indeed the video version, and uh, simple, just follow your iTunes and subscribe to that, and it will all come down the line free of charge. All right, boys and girls? I'm going to be sniffing my way through this today. I don't know why. Oh, uh, if, I, if those of you that watch the show, I may seem a little bit low in the picture. My chair has broken. 
Now, isn't that funny? Because I think it was Gary the other day. <coughs> Afterwards, doing my my big old thing about vegetarianism and all that, and he he, he like you know it's one of these people that obviously likes to point out any sort of non vegetarianism that there might be on the show, and indeed he he spotted that it was a leather chair, and this is the weird thing about it. I said, of course it's a leather chair. I'm not going to throw it out while it's not broken, am I? When I get a new one, or when this one breaks, obviously I'll get a new one. Well, blow me down. Less than two weeks later, it's broken. And I've had this chair 14 years. Unbelievable. What's happened is that the, the gas, there's like a gas cylinder underneath it, and I think that's gone because it's just sinking right the way down. So what I'm having to do at the moment is sit on a pillow to try, because I'm only a midget, <coughs> to try and get myself up a little high. Oh, that's better. I folded the pillar in half now, so I'm, I'm, I'm at my usual, my usual authoritative position, I think, really. Um, so that's what's happened. The chair's broken. Now, I actually, I don't, you know, this is <coughs> it was quite, <coughs> quite an expensive chair, to be honest. Um, and I don't really want to throw it away. So I had a little look on the Internet, and apparently there's some sort of pneumatic or uh, uh, air cylinder within the chair itself, which can be replaced so I'm going to turn it up, up upside down at some point and see if I can repair that. And I should be very pleased to repair this because this was about 300 quid when I bought it. Yeah, quite an expensive chair. But as I say, you know, I've got 13 years out of it, so it's at its time. Uh, but I think I, I should be able to repair this somehow. If not, I should get another one. And rest assured, Mr. Owen, uh, Mr. Gary, that will be definitely a non lever chair. OK. Thank you very much. Uh, it was my mate Ron's birthday this week. Oh, yes. And I'm very pleased to say I managed to completely embarrass him for his birthday uh, because in one of the places that I work at in Ealing, I took in a cake and got the drag queen on the stage to put him up on stage and present him with the cake in front of all the people. And he was totally he was horrified, absolutely horrified by that. Good, good. Not only that, uh, my mate Ron is afraid of, are you ready for this, sheep. Not lambs, sheep. For some reason, he's afraid of sheep. He says they lull you into a false sense of security, looking all fluffy and nice and kind. But if you go near them, they barge you. <laughs> he really is afraid of sheep. So I got him a second cake. I just happened to be in Waitrose the other day uh, and looking at the cakes. I'd already given him his birthday cake. But it wasn't quite his birthday. So for his birthday, what I'd done is I got another cake, which I happened to see in Waitress, which is a sheep. And he will open that and he will hate it. Good. I'm <laughs> good. I'm pleased he will hate it. It's all part of making him as uncomfortable as possible. So my best mate, Ron, is now 40 years old. That's 40. That's two times 20. That's 120 divided by 3. 40 years old. 4-0. Happy 40th birthday, Ronnie. 4-0. 40 years old. So old. Happy 40th birthday, Ron. Yes. And I hope you enjoyed your two cakes and then make you put on even more weight than you already have. Good luck. Actually, I was having this discussion with him um, about dentists because he's, he's got good teeth. And my, mine, I was looking in the mirror about my teeth recently and they're, they're kind of a little, little bit gappy. Do you know what I mean? Now, <clears throat> if you're regular listeners of the show, you know I haven't been to the dentist now for pff, about a year and a half. Um, the reason I stopped going because the last two fillings, problems with both of them, in that the, the two teeth... Uh, and the, the, these were two completely separate occasions, OK? The two teeth that were filled became ever so sensitive, hypersensitive afterwards, and it went on for some time. So I only had to touch it, you know, with a bit of cold water or, or tea or something like that. Oh, oh what a pain. The pain. And then <clears throat> the last time when I went to the dentist, I said, um, it's, it's the one back there and... He says, and he had that metal thing, and he says, I'm just going to touch that. Is it that one? And he touched it. Oh, my God, the pain. Oh, that's the one. So I didn't go back to him after that. 
I've been with him quite a few years. Not only that, it was getting rather costly. I must have been spending there with him over a thousand pounds a year. So I stopped going. Actually, no, it's, no that's wrong. It's, it's, not, it's not the money at all that, that was the problem. It was the fact that the last two fillings were problematic, which probably wasn't his fault, to be honest. I'm sure he's a professional and this, that and the other. But I just, I did, I lost confidence in him. So I haven't been. But I brush my teeth every day. And I do the flossing once every day. And um, I, I actually brush them about three times a day. And I've noticed, you know, oh, I keep thinking, oh, I should go down there. Because, you know, it doesn't matter how well you clean them. You're never going to get them as cleaning as the hygienist, are you? You know the hygienist with all those different gadgets scraping away in your mouth with a metal nail, with a rusty old nail, isn't she? <laughs> and then that other uh, sonic thing. <sighs> I mean, they do feel rather wonderful after that. The only thing was, well, the one that I was going to, again, she was expensive, like 45 quid because it was a private dentist. And sometimes the dentist would say, oh, you'll have to see the hygienist. I think we're going to have to have two visits for that. Well, that's 90 bloody quid on having your teeth cleaned. And to be honest, um, recently the woman changed. So there was a great woman there before. You'd, she, you'd sit in the sheet and she would start work. This one keeps telling you everything, the same thing all the time about how you should brush your teeth. For God's sake, I've been told this for years. Just get on with the bloody job, woman. We know how to clean our teeth. We know how to do the flossing. And she was like this. Chat, 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 chat. And there's one thing I can't stand, boys and girls. It's people talking unnecessarily. Going on and on about nothing of importance. So, I, I, I you know, the, the whole setup there I got a bit despondent with, so I stopped going. But I think I need to go again, so I'm going to go to an NHS dentist now, because they are much cheaper. There are a few around here. I'll, I'll see how that goes. I must go, though. I must go and have a check-up. And my mate Ron says... Because I noticed how good his teeth. I said, how comes your teeth are so, so good at the front? And he said, well, I had veneers put in. And I'm like, well, what are they? Apparently, they're these little things that they stick on the front of your teeth. Because I've got gaps. I've got gaps in my teeth. got gaps. i actually got gaps in my teeth now that were never there before. Probably due to age, I would have thought. Anyway, so he reckons I could have veneers put on. And that might be quite nice, mightn't it? veneers on my teeth obviously you know after they've been cleaned and sorted out if there are any problems in it i do notice there is a bit of an sensitive tooth at the back here if I do... actually it's not too bad today but i've noticed there's a sensitive tooth there and like there's, there's a gap between the gum and the tooth and there's like a bit that goes in there so i think it's and it's sharp so i think it's probably going to have to do something there but i um, haven't found a dentist yet but i'm definitely i'm going to go with an nhs one because, quite frankly, the private ones, they charge an awful lot of money. I mean, it really is a lot of money. So we're trying an HS one. So I'm going to have a little look around with those. I wondered, uh, have any of you got any veneers or anything like that on your teeth? Please let me know what they're like. Do you actually... Oh, excuse me, I've got hiccups. Do you actually know they're in your, in your head? The veneers. Can you feel them in your mouth? Anyone got veneers? Please let me know. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Have you got veneers? What are they like? Were they very expensive? Do they come in all different colours? I mean, perhaps I could have a different colour in my mouth. Perhaps a, a bright red or, or pink teeth. Or green, luminous green teeth. That would look nice, wouldn't it? I'm not really very keen on, you know, some people have a gold tooth. I mean, what, what, I don't quite know what all that's about. Is that like wearing an item of jewellery? Or I've seen some people with a stud in their gum. Oh, no, dear. Oh, God. You must get all those nasty little food particles stuck in there. How awful. A stud in your gut, in their gum. Like, does that hurt? And they always say no. Does that hurt you? No, it doesn't hurt. Of course it must do. Oh, don't like the idea of that. <clears throat> 
So, um, yes, that's the de- that's the, that's what I'm going to do at the dentist. Uh, I told you we're going to do it down to one show a week from uh, well, from the next one, actually. So it'll be on Saturdays. Saturdays is the new, um, uh, uh, just one show a week on Saturdays, OK, which, of course, we record on Fridays. Um, now, I mentioned Waitrose because that's where I saw this this cake. For, actually, I've got, do you want to see it? Do you want to? I've got I've got the cake. Those of you that are listening, don't worry. I shall describe it to you. Just give me a second. I could pop downstairs and get you the cake that I've got for Ron. Now I know I said to you I've given it to him already, but I haven't because I'm recording this show on Monday. Right? His birthday is Tuesday, so tomorrow he will get it. Okay? He's already had the one presented to him from the dragon, but he hasn't had the other one yet. So let me just go down and get it. You. T- Talk amongst yourselves for a second. There won't be long. Won't be a minute. Oh, oh dear. I've got to get this chair fixed. Oh, I don't have to buy a new one. New one won't be as dear anyway because it won't be leather. <coughs> don't see why animals should have to die for us to just have a comfortable seat. There we are. Ronnie's sheep cake, which I got from Waitrose. Not bad. £12 for this. And it comes in a, uh, a blue, green, and white, and brown checked box. And there's the cake inside, which is like a, the, the, the sheep's head is all brown, big white eyes and white icing all around the outside. And the icing is like, um, what, what they've done is like, you know, the little, cur- little curls of white chocolate. Have you seen those before? So that's what they've done with that. So that's, that'll be given to him uh, tomorrow. And of course, two, two very large numbers indicating his age, which is 40, 40, happy 40th birthday, Ron. So I really like that. Two cakes he's had out of me. I'm a, I'm a good friend, aren't I? Don't you wish I was your best friend? I bet you do, don't you? Of course you do. Anyway, so, um, oh, you'll love this. You will love this, what I'm going to tell you now. So I got this from my favourite store, Waitrose. That's why I do virtually all my shopping now. I love it in there. The service is fantastic. The staff are wonderful. Even the customers have a general respect for each other, which is just something you don't find in Sainsbury's. I'm sorry, you don't. You go in there, sometimes they're absolutely vile, some of the customers who go in Sainsbury's. They have no interest in anyone else but themselves. And they knock you with trolleys and things like that. They're rude. They're just downright rude inside. And I hate going in there now. So I go to Waitrose, right? Anyway, so I've got my self-scanning thing. You remember I told you a couple of weeks ago I've now registered for the self-scanning. And you go in there, you swipe your card in the machine. A little light lights up on the scanner that it wants you to take. You reach in this thing, pick up your scanner, and then... Off you go and do your shopping. So you scan the item with your handheld scanner. Beep, beep. And then you place the item in your bag. And then when you get to the till, you give them the scanner. They look at it. They push a few buttons, give you the, give you the uh, price, and then off you go. You already know what they're going to charge you because your scanner already has indicated this to you. Unless, of course, they've got special offers to take off at the till. So it's all much quicker. You don't wait in queues of people. There's no checkout assistant, so to speak, um, except for the lady. Well, there is a checkout assistant, but she hasn't got to do all your shopping because you've already done it for her. Okay. there is, of course, a certain amount of trust that the store Waitrose has placed in you for actually scanning everything and putting through the correct items. Right. Now. To check that you're doing it correctly, they would say, but of course to check that you're not stealing anything, which is fair enough, they sometimes do a random scan. Now, you may remember Suko's email from 
a couple of weeks ago and she was talking about the self-scanning thing and she was very, she's very worried that if they do a rescan, she might have got it wrong. Now, I know Suko very well. She would not steal from a store. And neither would I. I would not steal from a supermarket. OK. However, now and again, you will get a random scam. I haven't had one yet until last week. Oh, yes. <clears throat> this was the week that I went in and got the sheep cake for my best friend wrong and many other items. So I'd gone around the store. I think it was about 30, 37 pounds, 55 pence. OK. Got to the till. Gave him my scanner, gave him my shopping. Oh, it's come up as a rescan, sir. I said, that's fine, carry on. Right? So she starts scanning this stuff. I've now got my £36.55, the correct money, out and placed it on the counter in front of me. So she's doing this stuff. And then she turns around and she says, she says that's £29.30, please, or something like that. I said, well, it can't be. She said, well, that's what it's coming out as. What did you scan it as? Because I don't even think they look, I don't even think they check your handheld scanner, to be honest. But uh, I said, I said, well, I said it said £37 on the other scanner. She said, oh, well, maybe it's the special offers come off. So she had a look. She said, oh, no, it can't be that. It's the 50 pence. And I'm looking at this stuff. Yeah, because what they do, they take it out of the bags and then they rescan it. And while they rescan it, they repack your bag for you. So it's not like out in front of you. I'm looking at these two carrier bags and I'm like, are you sure? I said, something must be wrong there. The gap is too large. I could understand 20 or 30 pence, but seven pounds. And she said, yes, she says that this is correct. She says, um, I said, well, well it, it, it's wrong. She said, well, she, she says, we're not really worried about that because it's in it's in your favour anyway. I said, do you want to do all this again? She said, no, no, it's fine, sir. This must be the correct amount, £27.55, please, or whatever it was. I said, well, oh, OK, then. So um, I paid the money, took my bags and off I went. And that's it. So now I'm concerned. I don't... I, 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 I cycled to the shop and back again. I'm concerned that I've overscanned before. But I honestly can't see... I, I don't make a mistake with my... I'm not that good at maths, OK? But I don't make a mistake with money. I never make a mistake with money. And I cannot see for the life of me how I have overscanned more items than I actually had in the basket. Because the thing bleeps. It bleeps. Beep. And then you could look at it and it says, I don't know, you know, pint of milk. It says pint of milk, 53 pence. You put it in your bag. And you bleep. Jar of marmalade, one pound ten. You put it in your bag. I did all that. And each time I looked and I placed it in the bag. So something's going to miss somewhere. What I should have done, now that I think about it, is kept the receipt, got home, and then looked at everything and ticked it off. Like my mum used to do that all the time. And she would often find something on there, you know. My mum, I'm going back here 25 years, she used to do it. Because she used to go to uh, shopping in Sainsbury's in Kingston. And she would often find an extra apple or an extra pint of milk on there. And she goes straight back to that shop to straight back. So I've been charged for something I didn't have. And they would never argue. That's the strange thing about it. You would think, actually, you know, once you'd left the store, that's it, you know, because you could just go back and say, oh, hang on a minute, I've got extra tins of baked beans here that I didn't buy. And they're going to say, well, you have got no proof. But they didn't. They always used to believe her. And she didn't, she didn't make anything up. My mum would never lie or anything. My mum was straight up, believe me. She would never lie or anything like that. Proper Catholic lady, right? And they would just give her the money back. So I should have done that. What I should have done is emptied my bags on the kitchen table and checked the, um, the receipt. I think, you know what I think? I think she's somehow missed something. 
I'm, I really do. I, I, I honestly don't think I could possibly have made a mistake. But she, she wasn't having any of it. She said, nope, it's not that. It's only £27. So whatever happened, I saved myself £7. Very, very strange indeed. Anyone else have any um, incidents like that? I mean, thank God it was, it was, um, it was under, overscanned. What if I'd have underscanned? I wonder what happens then. You know, so they do the rescan and they find that, that you haven't put six eggs through or, 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 or a jar of jam. I wonder what would happen then. Do security guards come and take you away? Do they call the police? It's very scary. I'm starting to think if I don't want to use this self-scanning thing again. If I'm going to do myself out of seven quid, every, <laughs> you know what I mean? Every time I do the shopping, then it's surely not worth doing, is it? It's all very worrying, dear. Your thoughts on that, please? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk And... And I now find there's a little note on the checkout that Monday to Friday, if you spend more than five pounds in the store on your self-service, uh, your self-checkout thing, what's it called? Self-scan checkout, self-scanner. If you spend more than five pounds, you get a free newspaper, dear. Either a Daily Mail or a Daily Telegraph. Well, a Daily Telegraph, that's worth one pound twenty. And a free cup of tea. It just gets better and better. Thank you, Waitrose. I love it. The only thing is, it's a little bit further than Sainz, but it's worth the journey, dear. <clears throat> worth the journey, absolutely. Your thoughts on that one, please? Email address chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. The only thing is, uh, on the way home uh, from Waitrose, I got caught in Howstones. They suddenly came from nowhere. And I had a hat, so it wasn't too bad. But where they were hitting my nose, it was really... Because my nose is quite big, you see. I have a, a long nose. And it, it was sticking out. And my nose was stinging. It was red raw by the time I got home. Because the house stones were hitting it as they came down. <laughs> Awful. Awful. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um... We've done the broken chair. Well, I do hope you enjoyed last Friday's live show, incidentally, gang. An hour and a half. That was a marathon show, wasn't it? An hour and a half. Did anyone actually stay with us for the entire length of that, I wonder? If you did, well done. And we've got an anniversary, boys and girls. Um, oh, we've got so many birthdays at the moment. My uh, nephew, Gary, he was 28 on Sunday. Evie. His, his daughter was one just before that. And we have an anniversary, boys and girls. We have an anniversary, two people that come to the quiz night on Tuesdays. Tom and Lila have been going out for one year. Happy anniversary. Not only that, but Tom has just had a birthday as well. Actually, I don't know what Tom's birthday. Let me have a look. Tom, let's see, have a look for Tom's birthday. How old is he now? He's about, ooh. are you 20? 20. Oh, where are you? Is that you at the top there? That doesn't look like you. No, that's not you. Uh, Thomas, let's try Thomas. Maybe it's Thomas. Ah, there it is. Thomas is now, does it say, let's click on about. <coughs> oh, Birthday, it just says 27th of April. Doesn't say how old you are. I reckon 22. Got to be 22, Tom. So, happy, do, you, do I have to sing happy birthday to you? Just a minute. Let me bring up my birthday tune for you. Thank you. And I shall sing happy birthday to you. With musical accompaniment. Oh, yes. We don't do everything by halves here, you know, Mr. Tom. Thank you very much. They're not having much luck at the quiz at the moment. They keep coming a little bit down the list. I'm going to gonna have to tailor one of my quiz nights to you. You tell me what sort of questions you want, and I'll try and insert them for you, OK? I can't give you the answers. No answers. But, I, I you know, I, I can give you the sort of a theme, perhaps a theme to the, um, 
the to the to the to the questions that you want. You might, for example, say, "Oh, can we have some questions on Star Trek?" And I might be able to sort out some Star Trek questions. All right, Tom. <laughs> as well one year together do you know i think the, the longest person i spent with someone tom was two years that's the <laughs> the longest ever ever time i managed i can't i just can't put up with people dear i'm sorry i can't they get on my blooming nerves they really do Anyway, congratulations on your one-year anniversary as well. What presents did you receive for your birthday? Was it anything exciting like an electric train set or electrics? Please don't tell me, oh, I got clothes. That's a boring present, isn't it? Isn't it? So you get someone, what did you get? Oh, I got clothes. Don't you think that's a boring present? Wouldn't you rather have a toy of some sort? You know, a replica machine gun or so that you can play... Play it being, you know, army or something like that. Or a cowboy, a cowboy outfit. <laughs> I had one of those once. A little cowboy outfit. I've got a picture of it somewhere. I might pull that out one day. Happy birthday, Tom. Right, let's do some uh, emails. Going to say hello to James. Hello, James. Who says, hi, Chris, you mentioned ditlopenic. It's a type of painkiller. I have been on it for my arthritis. It doesn't work in the same way as antibiotics in the way you were saying. But if the pain is bad, it does help to sort the pain out. I hope you do get the pain sorted out um, uh, in, in your foot. Well, yes, I've been on these uh, tablets for well, about a week now. And it does seem to have sorted the pains out, but I now have a different pain in my foot. Now, this is not in the same place, like round the sides, like I was telling you it was before. This is kind of up. It's, it's at the top of the foot, and it's more of a sharp pain. So I don't think that was anything to do with the one that was already there. Anyway, as I say, uh, the doctor did say if it's no better in a month, then to go back. So I'll, I'll leave it and see what happens. But certainly the pains on the sides of the foot, both sides of the foot, have gone. As indeed has the pain in my arm. That, that's all gone. So it must have been something to do with um, uh, uh, some, something inflamed somewhere. James says, as for boy races and their cars, they realise in the end, and I know someone who lives near me who used to be like that, and they realise when they couldn't afford it anymore. Oh, it's very, ex very expensive to keep putting your foot down in the car, let me tell you. It certainly is. You use an awful lot more fuel. Soft drinks. They are getting expensive in pubs now. It's about the same price as lager. Oh, yes. I mean, I was nearly charged... Was I, I was somewhere the other day, and they were trying to charge me £2.50 for a pint of soda water. Soda water is fizzy water. £2.50 pence for a pint of soda water. I said, I don't think so. And they gave, I said, you can put it back. And I walked off. I'm not buying that for water. You're having a laugh, aren't you? I don't mind paying something, but don't try and rip me off. Believe me, I do not allow anyone to rip me off anymore. No. Unless I absolutely have to, like a car service. My car's gone in service this week. 30,000 miles I've done in that, Yaris. That's going in service. Actually, today, Wednesday. Got to take that in for a service. Um, the price of soft drinks, when I am, I don't know how it can be justified. And it's things like this that don't help the pub trade. And I'm noticing pubs are quieter where I am because of things like prices. I can't say for anywhere else in the UK, but it's, uh, it's sad to see. Well, that and the fact that they're all closing down, these pubs. Enormous amount of pubs closing down at the moment. They're all tied up in red tape from the government, you see. That's the trouble. 
Hello to Marge. <clears throat> now, Marge says that this is a private email, but I can use anything on it in the show. That's OK. So I will read it out. Do you remember what I was saying, Marge? I was asking her, if it's possible, could she cast a spell so that I could find a partner of some sort? When I, when I say of some sort, I, you know, I do mean a fella. You know, not, not perhaps like a dog or a cat. I, I, perhaps I could find a fella. And I, I said, can you, can you cast some sort of spell? Right, so Marge replies, a spell is just a to-do list of what your intentions are. I will give you one that might help in your endeavour to find that special person. Casting a spell on an individual is a no-no. You are only doing one to draw the energy of love to you. It does not make them be your slave. Oh, no, I wouldn't want a slave. Right, mind you, I am a slave myself, Marge, as you well know to my cat, Katie. She meows, I move. So I... I think I am a slave to my, a slave to my cat, cat, uh, cat. Marge says, get a pink or red candle. Light the candle and visualise love or companionship or what it is you want in that mate you seek and light it on a full moon. If you wish, this can be in your Catholic way as it feels comfortable. Light the candle and visualise that you are with that special person whom you can fulfil their life and they yours. Vanilla attracts the male aspect. You can anoint the candle with a drop of vanilla and rub the side. Sit quietly and just watch the candle. If you want anything else like a prayer, you can. However, you practice your uh, sorry. If you want to add anything like a prayer, you can. However, your practice is fine. It's how you connect the deity. Then snuff out the candle. Do not blow it out and thank the spirit God. So, thank you very much. There's a few little bits and pieces there. She goes on to say a few more attracting herbs for love are bay. OK, the herb bay, you know, bay leaves, bay. The leaves, which represent the glory of love, are put in a bath and used to attract a soulmate. I think this is what I need, a soulmate. A soulmate. Sweet pea, an attraction flower. The plant is kept in the garden to attract friends and lovers. Bathing in the flowers is thought to increase popularity. I wonder how you do that. I mean, how many... Do you have to chop them all down and, like, put them in a bath? I don't have a bath, Marge. I don't know if I've ever told you that. I only have a shower. I've got a power shower. I don't have a bath. I, I don't quite like the idea of laying there in, in, well, dirty water, you know, for hours on end. Vanilla pods. Carried on the person, vanilla's vibration is thought to cause others to find you seductive. And cinnamon attracts love, money and sexual desires. There's others, but that gives you a start. All life is energy, and that's how magic works. You're working with the energy and your own. A love spell may assist you in strengthening your relationship or finding that special someone. It's not going to do all the work for you and it's not going to force a relationship where it's not meant to be. Happy hunting. So thank you very much for that, Marge. Lots indeed on there to, um, to think about and, of course, to carry out. I do appreciate your little bits and pieces, Marge, when you send them. Suggestions about um, coughs and things like that. Thank you. One email, to, uh, one more email today from uh, Wendy. <clears throat> Hello, Wendy. And she says, on the subject of my last show, started watching last night. Feel like I've just finished a marathon. Yeah, that'd be the one that was an hour and a half. It was a long show, wasn't it? Actually, depending on how it goes, um, 
now that we're going to go down to one show for the summer, the one show may get a bit longer. It just depends, really, because as I say, we do record it live on Friday. If lots of people ring in, it might be longer. If no one rings in, it might be shorter. It just depends. And of course, the amount of emails and things and also my my rubbish that I talk about all the time. You know, it, the, the, you might find the one the single show gets a bit longer. I hope that's all right with you. Great show again, Chris. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Mark, your karaoke singer, sounds like a really nice chap. Good to hear him chat. So pleased for you that you got to meet uh, got to meet your chat show host hero Steve Allen. Must listen to his show sometime. Don't suppose you want to adopt two dogs for the day, would you? <laughs> Don't think Katie would like that too much. I, I I quite like dogs. My sister's got three wonderful dogs. One's very very old now. His name's Duke, and he's a great big old black Labrador, and he's what? It's such nice dogs. She's also got another Labrador who's getting on a bit as well now. Uh, her name's Duchess, female dog, and I I'm quite close to her when I go up there. And uh, Barney, which is a little spaniel. The dogs are driving me batty. They are being mischievous. Wouldn't be without my fur babies, though. How is Katie, by the way? Oh, she's very well. Yeah, she's very well. I actually got this thing in the post today, funnily enough, from um, from the vets that I use. You, did you know you can now get a, a flea injection for cats, which lasts six months? I'd never heard of such a thing. So I might go and get... I'm going to inquire how much that is. Because usually I've got that thing to squeeze on the back of her neck. But she doesn't really like it. You know, I've, I've got to get her, like, when she's asleep or something like that. And then I, I carefully pull back the fur a little bit and squeeze it on her neck. But that sounds quite a good idea to me. The, the, uh, the flea injections apparently last six months. But I don't know how much they are yet, so I'm going to make an inquiry of that. Although I've got, got a little uh, coupon through with the letter which says £10 off. So I might give that a go. But she's very well. Hope she's doing well, says uh, says Wendy. Uh, Anita gets to meet Barry on her platinum uh, thing today, which, of course, that's already happened now. And then, of course, the concert afterwards. So excited for Anita. Yes, yeah, so was I. I. I did send Anita a couple of messages um, wishing her a good time. And, of course, she's been and gone now. The only thing is that was a couple of days ago. We haven't heard from much from her yet, have we? I'm expecting an email with all the details of the meeting and that with Barry. That's wonderful to, to meet someone that you you totally respect for what they do, isn't it, eh? Hope you have a great day, Chris. Um, she says, hope this message makes sense. Have been on painkillers the last couple of days. High, head up in the clouds, high as a kite. Oh, can I have some of those? <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. And that's it. Oh, and she did, uh, she says she, she enjoyed uh, my shirt last time, the um, purple striped shirts. Did you like that? A lot, um, lot of my clothes, to be honest, Wendy, they do start taking on, like, a, 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 a tinge, depending on what other colours they've been washed with. <laughs> Ronnie goes mad. My mate goes mad at that. He says, if you've been washing your stuff with something else again, look at that sheet. Why is it looking blue? So it's a sheet. It's a sheet. Does it matter? See, it doesn't matter to me that it's gone a bit blue. It really doesn't. All gardening news. Um, everything's doing well in the garden. My uh, runner beans, I planted runner beans. They have now germinated. Now, runner beans, if it's anything like they were last year, they grow very quickly, runner beans. And the little pots I've got in kind of a cold frame at the moment, in case there's frost at night. They have germinated. Uh, all the tomatoes have germinated. They are small plants. Um, the carrot plant, I bought some carrot plants. Uh, at the garden centre. They're in now. They're coming along all right. I also... Do you remember last year I had carrots? And I told you they only grew to about one or one and a half inches long. And very, very small. Well, I left some in over the whole of the winter. And I'm going to pull those shortly. And they didn't die. This is the thing. And there's a lot of growth from the top of them now. So I reckon they they will have done better now. So I'm looking forward to pulling those at some point. I'll let you know how we get on with those. All right. That's it for me today, boys and girls. Uh, the next show, uh, the next recorded show is on Saturday for you. 
Uh, and then it will be only on Saturdays from then, OK? There won't be a Wednesday show throughout the summer because there's lots of other bits and pieces and things uh, uh, for me to do, boys and girls, OK? We, of course, record the Saturday show on Friday. You're welcome to join us for that. It's on Friday mornings at 10.30 UK time. If you want to find where to go for that, simply go to United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk look at the top there and uh, join us uh, and you'll see where to go there join me on facebook my facebook username is facebook.com forward slash chris reardon uk and twitter as well still on twitter don't know if i'm going to stay on there i didn't last time and um, i just don't see the point of twitter i still don't see the point of twitter but if you want to join us on there my username on twitter is all is also chris reardon uk email address chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Be lovely to hear from you. Thanks so much.